PlayStation 3 is an iconic piece of 2000s hardware. It sold over 87 million units in its 11 year lifespan with several iterations of the system being released in subsequent years. My PS3 is a 2006 launch model judging by the sticker on the back, which means that it's backwards compatible with PlayStation 2 games, which is a big feature considering that that thing ended up being the best selling console ever. The graphics for the time were utterly groundbreaking, which became a big feature as home gaming transitioned into the high definition era. But to understand how they pulled this off, we have to take a look at some of the insane hardware under the hood of the PS3. Inside the PS3 is a 3.2GHz PowerPC based cell CPU, which is over 10 times as fast as the PS2 and clock speed alone. But what brought this experience together was the RSX Reality Synthesizer, which is actually based on a high-end Nvidia GPU of the time, the 7800 GTX. It was paired with 256MB of dedicated VRAM, and the system itself had another 256MB of XDR RAM. One major feature was including a Blu-ray disc drive built right into the system, as this made it a common choice for home theater enthusiasts as it would have been cheaper than just buying a whole new Blu-ray player at the time. Keep in mind that the Xbox 360, let alone the Nintendo Wii, couldn't play back any HD formats natively, and the Xbox 360 had an external attachment for HD DVD, which, as we all know, lost the format war. However, one downside of packing so much technology into a little box is that, well, the box can't be exactly so little anymore. This thing weighs 11 pounds by itself, and it is loud, and when the fans get going, it pushes enough air to dust the floor. This thing almost consumed almost 200 watts of power, which was pretty huge especially back then. However, this thing does have a heatsink substantial enough to handle the load, unlike, you know, a certain HD console of the time. These substantial features sold for only $499, or $750 in today's money, which was a lot more than the PS2, but you have to keep in mind that PC gaming, especially in high definition, was still way more expensive. This is a Dell Inspiron 9300 with a top of the line GeForce 7800 GTX and Pentium M770 CPU inside of it. This would have cost you over 3 grand back then and it still can't place most games in full HD. If you wanted a relatively inexpensive and seamless way to get HD gaming back then, it was this or the Xbox 360. But with specs out of the way, let's talk about the games and the experience. While the Nintendo Wii was a famously experience-focused system, leaving out features like HD and resolutions in favor of motion controls, the PS3 was dead set on fidelity and ease of use. Sony has famously stuck with the same controller design since the inception of the PlayStation, which works in its favor. That means you can basically pick up one of these things and immediately know how to use it. It also preferred wireless controllers, added to the Xbox 360 and the Wii, simplifying setups immensely. But it also became annoying because it had to recharge and there was no option to just quickly swap out double A's like it had in the Wii remotes. Despite the utilitarian approach to design though, there was definitely a gimmick or two in this system. The most notable might be the PlayStation Move controller and the PlayStation Eye, which allowed real world movements to be translated into real games and come on, they knew exactly what they were doing with this design. Without the weird ball on the end, I think Nintendo would have sent a cease and desist at Mach 5. It didn't sell horribly though and it got a decent amount of software support, although it's largely forgot about today. This console also had the unfortunate timing of living right during the 3D TV revolution, where everyone was going to have a 3D TV inside their homes, and that worked out great. You know, the only natural progression of technology. But for games that supported it, the PlayStation 3D display provided the true 3D experience, even though it still required special glasses. It was also notable for allowing two multiplayer screens to be displayed at once, specifically by splitting the optics. This, I feel, is legitimately better than most split-screen multiplayer solutions today, as you get more space and was far more fair in stealth games. But obviously, 3D TV never quite caught up with the mass market, and this just makes it another gimmick in the whole set of things. 
With that out of the way though, I want to talk about usability and using this console in 2023. Is it worth it? Well, being the year it is, all the online services have since been shut down, and most of the games you can play on this can be emulated on any modern PC. However, I think the PlayStation 3 has a unique charm that we didn't really see from any other console, especially the later revisions of the PlayStation 3. I mean, like this font on the front. This was literally taken from the Spider-Man movies that were being released at the time, and <laughs> arguably it was kind of cheesy, and they changed it up in the later revision in 2009. But it kind of just sterilized it a bit. We didn't really ever get this kind of aesthetic back. And it was also the last PlayStation to use this kind of colored logo on the front. And the later revisions make it easy to forget just how much of a beast of a console this was when it came out. I mean, they shrunk the die process of the CPU or GPU inside this thing three times over its lifespan. They were really cu putting cutting edge technology into this thing. But obviously, a great console is only made by having great games. So does it? Well, I'd argue that had a lot of great releases. However, there was a lot of criticism when this console came out by not having a lot of launch title games. Over the course of its lifespan, it would have over 700 games released for it, but compared to the Wii and the Xbox 360 which had a thousand, it seemed kind of weak and it kind of spawned the whole trend of having this meme where the PS3 has no games, which is objectively untrue but it's funny because it's ironic. I only have a small selection of games to demonstrate today, but I think they show off the immense power of the PlayStation 3, so enjoy. So yeah, about that. I was playing Bioshock on this console and then it just decided to um, totally die. Whenever I turn it on, it just kind of does three beeps and turns back off, which I looked up, it could be a hardware failure. I did get the PlayStation for free, so I knew this going in because the owner said it was broken and I thought I fixed it by taking it apart and cleaning it, replacing the thermal paste, but hey, maybe something else is wrong with it. But either way, I do have the games. We have Bioshock, which is, you know, an absolute classic. Dead Space 2 and 3, both really cool horror games, and God of War. But those are the only four that I have. But regardless of my specific unit's functionality, the PlayStation 3 has made a remarkable impact, especially on people who grew up in the 2000s. This was likely the console that first introduced many people to online gaming and in HD. I might not have gotten to play the console for long, but from what I saw, I think people would have been amazed by the graphical abilities of this thing, especially in 2006, especially considering that I think it holds up even today. Sure, there's not quite as many details or polygons in the scenes, but they render smoothly and it looks realistic enough to the point where I don't find it distracting. And it might sound like I'm suggesting you go out and buy a PlayStation 3 today, but I would kind of recommend against that to be honest with you. The prices are absurdly high for what is 17 year old hardware, and the games are even more expensive, considering that you can just emulate them on PC if you really wanted to. I got my console for free, and the games were cheap enough to the point where I figured that I might as well have a little bit of fun with it. And I did for about 45 minutes. But do you remember having hours of fun with a PlayStation 3 as a kid? What kind of model did you own? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, this is Calc G out.